Hey guys, Skip here. Uh, just going to get started on this thing. First thing I wanted to do is the uh, attachment of the nose to the rest of the fuselage. And uh, what I'm going to do first, they recommend cross hatches, cutting cross hatches and stuff. I usually just use something like a skewer and I don't just poke straight in. I usually make different holes so you, when, you get, when the glue bites, it bites at different angles. Okay, so I'll be doing that. And you go go deep enough so that the glue that you're using can sink in. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing first, and then uh, we'll follow along with the rest. Okay, see you in a short. Okay, we're back. We've poked the holes and stuff in here around, and we've done it as well on the on the front of the the nose, or front of the fuselage. Now I want to get this up in the air a little bit, and I'm put a towel under it to protect it. But it's already in something here pretty good that's pretty useful for uh, for doing what needs to be done right now. Okay, without hurting it, that's a good good prop. Get up even a little bit higher. Okay. And then we're supposed to put enough glue on these and uh, and the back of this and shoot a little glue in those holes. But I'm not sure if I want to make this as permanent as everybody else or normally because I may end up moving at some point and having cut this thing in half and cut those carbon spars in half might be a might not be such a cool thing. So I might do a, a, a light, uh, a very light little few dabs of glue. So it'll be sturdy in there, it'll be holding, you know, but I'm gonna be counting on most of my joint and, and the rest of the stuff in the battery tray that holds it together. It does only support uh, maybe a half of a battery, guys. So I mean, that's not much. It's not gonna be too much weight on there. And the nose cone is foam too, so it's light. Um, so I think that would probably be enough. And then if I just put a little bit of foam tack glue on this, I can still probably get it out without having to cut it if I should have to take this apart. In the meantime, it should be plenty sturdy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get that done. I use my foam tack glue. That's, uh, that's my favorite. All right, so we're going on this. And then we're going to set it up to dry. Okay? Hold tight. Okay guys, so we've got this thing drying here right now. I'm going to leave it here probably for a good couple hours before I mess with it and then uh, we'll be putting the rest of the stuff together. This goes in the nose cone here, this piece here, so it doesn't fall out. Uh, that's the pedo too, we can do that last. But basically these four little clips have to go on after this is dry and uh, glue those on there. And then the thing, then after that, I believe we're going to be doing the tail assembly. Okay, so hold tight while this dries, and I'll spare you that time. See you in a short. Okay, that thing should be pretty well set. It's been about two hours. Uh, at least, I'm, I usually give it overnight at least, and, and several days for a full cure. But uh, two hours is plenty enough time for me, 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 for me to be able to work with this. So, uh... I'm going to set up with, this was uh, what my safe came in, and it just it looked like it would be an excellent little deal for, uh, for what I need here. Okay, pick some of these things up, so I'm probably going to bridge it up, depending on that. Okay. Sets nicely back there. And 
I can just either turn this over or I can just shim underneath it. With, uh, with a block. Just like that. Okay, guys, these clips that they give you are labeled uh, right and left, and it gives you an arrow direction, and you want that arrow to be going forward. Okay, so we're going to check that just to make sure. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, ordinarily, I do want to put a couple little little marks in here. just to break up because it is painted there and you know those clips will just pop off with the paint if they don't have any foam to hold on to right so we're going to do a little poking action get underneath it here real quick and do the same thing and that should be pretty sufficient a couple on the leading edge there take the right clip and grab the left clip grab the right clip and put some earphone tack in there or you put it on the model itself if you want I'm going to put it on the uh, on the clip on the inside of the clip because I like to keep when I did the front edge you know the front nose I like to keep the glue off that leading edge so that when you smash it in there it it smashes out it doesn't come seeping out the rest okay so that doesn't take too much of that got a little bit more in there than I wanted right there so we'll just put it on that side okay and the, also the reason for that being a right and left even though they will turn around and interchange is there's some nubs on them where they where they took them off the mold and you kind of want that to be you know where it's supposed to be so with right with the arrows forward and just press that on the on the place okay I'm gonna pull it off again just for a little bit of 10 second let the glue kind of set a little bit and I put that back there it'll be good there and it'll stay there for good what did I do here hold on I accidentally dabbed a little bit over there, but I got it off. Make sure your fingers are clean. So just kind of pinch that onto there and, and make sure it's in space and it's flush with the with the body. And then you just want to repeat the process with the other stuff. Okay, hold tight. Just like I did with the rest of it make sure we get a good bite on both sides except this time I'm going to put it a little on here press it on squeeze put it right in that groove there give it a second and I'll pull it up a little bit or off <laughs> just give you a chance too if you've got any extra spooge around the side there you can get that and simply place this back on there stick it down tight Right where it's supposed to be. Okay. 
just like that. And then we'll just do the same thing with the other side. Okay, see you in a moment. Okay, so I've got these in here and now they've set for just a little bit and I wanna pinch them in again. It's been about 10 minutes just to make sure that they haven't come back off of there. And it kind of works the glue and makes sure that it gets into the little holes. Okay. Make sure they're all flush. I've already made sure I don't have any spooging, any extra glue out, because that's when you take it off. And if you've got a little bit, you can usually wipe that off real quick. But this looks pretty good. All right, we're going to let that dry up. Hold tight, we'll be back and get started with the tail. See you in a short. Actually, I mean, uh, I gotta do the battery tray first, then we'll do the tail. So here's the parts bag, main parts bag. It's got all the other stuff, push rods and, and the elevator stuff back there, the rods, plus uh, uh, battery compartment stuff. But we're gonna put the battery compartment in, and it requires four batter, uh, four, four screws. And if you look in their parts kits, they've, they've done a nice thing here where they always separate the screws and stuff now and you can see this is the four right there uh, I could look at it in the manual but it's going to tell me that these are the four that I need to mount it down in there and that'll be about it so we'll get that one done fishing it right under the wires line up the holes driving some screws. I'm not going to push real hard. I want this to kind of self-tap and bite in because I just did glue this front end on it. I don't want to be pushing stuff out of there. self-tap. So right, we'll get this one started. Well, I'm going to have to move this something up a little bit here, guys. So hold tight. I'm going to have to make the holes where the battery tray is so that that's not exactly perfect. But uh, we're going to make it so. All right? Hold tight. Okay, on the last one here, guys. Did have to finagle it a little bit and just open up the holes just a tad at the surface with a pick to get the soft tappers to kind of want to bite a little easier. Like I said, I don't want to put too much pressure on this. And you don't want to make these too tight or you'll strip it. Now, not a bad idea, by the way, guys. Because you'll feel it is kind of a, a on a weak a weak bind there is to leave those in for a little bit and when you're done and going over everything take the screws back out put a little bit of foam tack glue on there and drive them back in again okay and then they'll be set for good all right so that's that we're going to move on to the tail section and uh, battery trays are in and we'll see you in a short Trying out the fit. Not a bad fit, not a bad fit at all. Okay, looking good guys. We'll see you in a short. Well, first screw up guys. Uh, remember I said all four of them came in a pack and it was kind of simple. Um, they're the same diameter, but these are the flat head ones that I actually need for the tail. Uh, the ends of them are flat and I, I should have caught that. Oops. But better to catch it now than, than later. And thankfully they're the same diameter and they're a little bit longer. So um, 
they'll actually bite down in there so I won't have to worry about that so much because they didn't seem to go deep enough but I guess that was the reason is because I put them somewhere that where they didn't belong so we'll just put these where they belong back here on the tail section and then put the right screws back in here. Yeah, that actually feels like it fits a little bit better too. Still, I'm gonna put a little bit of foam tack glue in there, so uh, let me cut this real quick so I can do that real quick. We'll be right back and we'll go to that tail section. Okay, now we'll start with the tail section, the uh, horizontal stabs or elevators. And you're going to start with these guys here. And you notice there's a couple of uh, knurled endings here. And they're going to be inserted because screws are going to go through the bottom here, which is going to hold this rod in place. Okay, so you want to line that up in there. You can kind of see the grooves. And then you need your flathead screws. What did I do it before? Uh oh. I lost one of my flatheads. I know I didn't put it back in there because I forgot to. Oh shit, I wonder if I did. Anyway, these are flatheads, and they will go in here. Thusly. They're kind of self-tapping so that they uh, will bite the plastic. <laughs> I think I put one of the other ones back into the battery tray again too. I'm going to have to go check. Okay, that one went right into the, the locking in area. So we'll give it a little torque. Remember, not over torque. Guys, this is sometimes why the speed build is easier for me. Because I don't have to concentrate about the camera and what I'm doing. If I make little mistakes, um, you know, you, you don't catch them. Like putting the screw back in there that I just took out, which is what I'm sure I did. Problem is, I've got them all laid out over here and I should have separated them, which is what I usually do. Okay. So this side's done. We're going to do the other side and we'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to install the uh, elevators. We've got these in there pretty tight. They're not going anywhere. A little catch thing just in case I lose one of these stupid little screws. The little collets. It's happened. <laughs> Always a good idea to sweep your floor first. Especially if you have dogs. So yeah, probably a good idea. Screw these little things in part way first. Little set screws. Surprised to see their Phillips head guys. I, I, ordinarily I think I've seen these uh, as Allen screws hex heads which I think would, would have been better but uh, for the purpose I, I think they'll be just fine so then we'll just take uh, this would be the uh, the right because it's upside down just slide it on here I like to get it on just about almost on and I can usually kind of guide it with my fingers get on the rest of the way okay, just get the collet to slide here there we go 
I'll just probably slid on. Grab my little nifty difty screwdriver. You want this kind of centered, guys, because remember there's going to be travel this way and that way. This way and that way. So you want to make sure that you have this at what it's supposed to be, I believe, a neutral position, which is actually going to be about there or there even. I'm not sure, but uh, make sure when you put this on there that you get it centered in the middle the set screw. Otherwise, it's going to bind on the of the sides of the elevator oh, and that's a knocked it off of there I'll get that down there. So, okay and uh, doesn't have to be up there right real tight uh, just almost up this is on there about as far as it can go because it's sitting on a bushing okay so get these up and straight almost touching get them to set in a set place because you don't want to run out of range when you're flying one of these because the set screw bound you up as you'll see in a second it only go so far now either way probably going to take a little needle nose and or, or my uh, forceps and give that just an extra little tweak. The last thing I want is one of these stabs to fly off. That thing come loose and the stab fly off. And then again, maybe a little little drop of, of glue on it to keep it from backing out. Okay, do the same thing with the other side and we'll be ready for our vertical stabs and wings and then the primary build will be done. some speed build fashion guys I might still do some of it uh, when I'm doing some of the rest of the other stuff on this plane but uh, uh, somebody actually specifically asked me to to do the full full build on this so that if I could call anything if I see them you know, like like these screws you know I think it's probably a good idea that they be set a little bit better you put a little uh, foam tack in there when you set them just not a bad idea get a little collet set screw over here over my table so I don't lose the darn thing right try to get down here in the picture okay I just cut my fingernails so it's kind of I don't have as much nail to work with sometimes I need a little longer so I can get the things on there just right. Give me a second here, guys. Try, try again, right? Now, guys, I'm also noticing, like, this, uh, this, this ball joint here is up a little bit. So, you know, it's not a bad idea to go around and tighten all the screws that you see. You know, sometimes they, they miss a few things. So, uh, that's one thing I'm going to make sure is battened down. It looks like it might be that way, but I'm not sure. I'm going to tighten it. Put a little torque on it anyway. There we go. Now we got her. You get the thing kind of in a. I believe it's supposed to go about with that body line. There we go. 
up to it, but not quite. Just a little bit off, so it doesn't want to bind. And then it starts just about right in the middle. When I put it at its about its neutral position, that collar's right in the middle. So I've got I'm gonna have a full swing this way, full swing that way. Very important, guys. Might have been one of that guy's problem with uh, you know maybe he had the thing to call it, and he, when he tried to give enough elevator, it, it, it he could only go so far with it. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. Could have been a number of different things. Maybe he didn't have the servo centered up right. Maybe he didn't have them adjusted right. Could have been the MCB-E used to have a problem, I understand, with the, uh, like some of my other jets, I had to bypass the uh, MCB-E for the ailerons and run them directly to the receiver. Hope that's not an issue on this one. The last ones that they've sent out, they've had already had longer wires to go directly to the receiver. If they've ironed out that problem, uh, I'm going to find out before I fly this thing, and that's great, okay? But yeah. Make sure you tighten up different little things that you might see that, that maybe you need a little bit of tweaking. That's not bad. That's pretty tight. This one looks like it's up a little bit, and it's not really. So, so that's fine. Okay? And I've already done uh, a check on all the other stuff that's obvious from the bottom. So there's your elevators, guys. Those are on there, and now we're going to turn it over, and we're going to get the stabs done up on top. Okay? Hold tight. Get a whole new angle on life. Okay guys, so we've got these uh, up, uh, verticals in pretty good shape. They're, they're pretty tight, not super tight, so they're not gonna bind. Got full range of motion, both sides. Just about the same with those lock screws. Yeah. That's where they fall to, so that's good. And so now we're gonna put the vertical stabs on. We've got to pull the wires out here because they've tucked them in there for you. Got the left one going on first. Pull this little wire out of here. There we go. So we'll watch our polarity. Wires are kind of painted, so be careful. That is the brown. Okay. <clears throat> nice and tight fit, too. Okay, double check your polarity again. Brown, brown, red, red, yellow. Okay. nice and tight. Now stick some of that back up in there and the rest I tuck right back in. Right down here. Now it shows Got three stubs here, guys, okay? But you're only gonna be putting screws in these two. This back one here is basically, I think, for an anchor. So let's put our stabs in here. pinch any wires that should lock right down push right down flush okay and then you're going to take the two 
three by fours. They give you four, uh, six of them all together. Two of them were for something else, I forgot. But uh, two on each side. Let's see if I can get at this from under here. I'm gonna have to flip it. Okay, so you get that one down, get the back one down, hold tight guys, I think I'm going to have to charge the battery on the camera, and we will be, get, we will be back. But I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down, you see how it's going, alright? Be back in a short. Guys, I believe this is a mistake uh, pointed out by the book, where it shows using these two to screw into, well it's these two, because these two are the only ones that have plastic hard points. So now i got to get the screw out of that, and that's a fiberglass, that's, a, that's basically a carbon fiber spar that's in there i didn't realize that so we got to get that out of there and then mount the damn things back up and charge the batteries up the camera and i'll be back shortly sorry for the wait okay guys sorry for that little interruption there uh, it's getting dark out already been on and off with this thing i had other stuff to do today too but uh, we had to wait for the glue to dry and found some other projects to do so that's a nice thing about being able to film it uh, being able to, to video at your leisure. So we'll get this one in, stalled. Take that baby out of there. Orange to orange, brown, sort of, brown. <laughs> Nice snug fit. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. I won't even have to tape these. A lot faster with the speed build, though, huh, guys? But uh, a couple of viewers wanted to see the whole, whole, whole nine yards. But you get to see some of the accidents and some of the mistakes I made, like uh, important. Not this one and this one, but this one and the far outside are the ones you want. And I swear the uh, instruction manual has arrows that point right to that middle, which is a spar. I should have second guessed that at, at first, but I didn't didn't notice it. Kind of having a little of an off day today, guys. I'm not firing on 100% thrusters, and not everything is going easy for me today. You know those days where not everything goes plan. Murphy's working a little overtime. That spar didn't want to fit in there very well, but also make sure we don't pinch the wires. Here they go in nice and nice and snug, nice and flush. Okay. Just snug, you know, and maybe just a little for good measure. 
because remember you're going into plastic plastic you know metal into plastic so don't want to overdo that Could have done this with my little uh, electric, but you know it's, it's easier to feel the torque. I like kind of like doing it by hand, all of these by hand, because then you can feel exactly where you're kind of wet with uh, with this stuff. I also liked it when they sent the Chinese screwdrivers with the Chinese screws. You know, Chinese hardware. They all all only work once anyway. But they did work. You know, a good screwdriver doesn't quite fit the Chinese screws too well. And uh, they're kind of like an in-between size a lot of times. And those screws are only good for one shot. So if you plan on replacing them or taking them apart and putting it together uh, very many times, guys, I would recommend, you know, getting some solid hardware. From the hardware store, uh, other stuff like the wing bolts and stuff, they look like they're pretty decent. And in fact, they're, they're pretty uh, specialized, so you might have to just stick with those. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the wings on. All right, let me get them ready for you guys. We'll be right back in a moment. Okay, guys, so we're going to put the spar through here. Try to measure a halfway point on this thing. These days the wings are pretty well fit, so you don't really overdo the spar on one side or the other. But I still like to eyeball it at least. It's pretty close. Close enough for hand grenades, horseshoes, stuff like that there. Uh, they got a little ring, wing connector, a uh, ribbon connector tucked in there so that they can paint it. And uh, good so you don't lose it. Only goes in one way, guys. So you want to look at the, the little, little nubs on it. That's the way it's going here. This is upside down, but we'll give it a little twist. And now it's, now it's just fine. Kind of rock them in there a little bit. Get a nice tight fit. And you shouldn't have to take the doors off with this one. Or the gear down with, with this one, the doors go right over. Very nice, very sweet. A couple of wing nuts. We do the same to the other side. You could do this the other way if you wanted to turn it upside down, guys. You know, that's the biggest point is make sure you get them in the right spot. And feel it go up kind of through and get into that screw. And I'm just going to start it because then I will probably want to at least flip it up on end. I don't want to turn it over. Because I don't want to take a chance on dinging the, the wings. I have done that in the past. And I usually use a big pillow for this purpose when I do this. But for this video purpose, we're just going to do it this way. Okay. Are they different lengths? No, they are not. So 
actually be going pretty good like this too. It's just fine. They are threaded and they are they have brass inserts on the uh, on the mounts. So they're pretty tough. You give, them, give them a reasonable torque. But yeah, at first when you're pushing the screw through, you're going to feel just a little bit of a resistance, guys. And that's like just the foam. And it carries through that and goes, uh, goes past a little bit further. So it gets into that, that locking lug. I got a feeling I missed this side. So. Let's see. Okay, we're getting there, guys. Let's get this side on. This should be fine. Willie, you can't really be in here right now, buddy. Okay? Or find a spot over there, that's fine. trying to get these stupid screws out of this plastic pouch that's like tough as nails. It's that plastic that you can't tear. Okay, here's our wing. Here's our wing. Let's see if I'm in aiming here, guys. You got me. Okay, yeah, looking good. Smile, Willie. Now I can't have a camera. motion from side to side on these connectors guys would be the best way to go about doing it. Make sure you tuck all your wires and you don't pinch anything. Very, very snug, guys. They're, it's a tight fitting plane. I like that. Okay. Again, maybe remember a little slight push through on the foam here with that screw, set screw. And then you find your the hole. And it goes right in really really pretty easy. You can just grab it and kind of give it a shove by hand first. You'll see it just kind of pops through there. And then you can find the threads and lock it right in. Just like so. Snug. got a very nice looking plane guys everything fits pretty nice and tight um, this is going to be a sweetheart the only problems I'm uh, problem I'm having is I might have to get a different receiver um, the receiver I've got is a stabilized receiver and I'm not so certain that it's going to fit sorry the bouncing around here guys but I'm not sure if it's going to be able to fit 
anywhere. I mean, there's three possible battery spots. I'm going to be flying with four thousandths and five thousandths probably. I'm thinking I may not have to use this center spot, but uh, so I was thinking about putting it here. Except that has to go. That has to go to the back. And I'm over a servo, so I don't know. I may end up getting another another receiver. The leads go all the way this far, guys. I mean, they had a wire attached, so maybe they want the receivers out in the nose somewhere, but even then, the wire's not long enough, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. In the meantime, it's built pretty much, uh, except for the servos and firing it up and, and binding it so that I can get the uh, servos to center. We'll get that done here in a, in a short. I'm not cutting the video yet, but I'm done, done for the day, so I'm going to see it back here in just a little bit you won't realize it but it's been overnight and uh have a better day at it tomorrow i'm a little off today anyhow but in the meantime the basic build is is complete uh it's just ready for power and and you know bind it up power drop the gear and set it up on the radio and put the push rods on there but yeah she's uh she's about ready to go one thing I want to do on this, guys, and I'm not want to, I don't want to close this canopy all the way yet. Yeah, I did. Is I'm going to put a piece of gorilla, clear Gorilla Tape on this so that it comes. Oh, wait a minute! Looks like they already did have one. Ah, they got one here. I didn't see it. It was tucked underneath and stuck to the bottom. Okay, so you got one. That makes it much easier to get this thing off without hurting the canopy. Sometimes you gotta pop the tape a little bit so let's find a good spot for it and then pop it through. It doesn't look like they've, re they've pre popped it. <laughs> Get it lined up where you want it. Get it straight and then push that little latch through it. Okay? Now you got a nice hole there for that tab. So when you pull this off, it comes out nice and easy. And it always goes back on. <laughs> nice and easy. Okay? Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back uh, when I get the transmitter for it or the, the receiver for it or decide where I'm going to put the one that I've got and then we'll hook up the linkages and give it a test fire and all that kind of stuff okay see you in a short thanks for watching and since we've almost got it done might as well give you a pretty good depiction of what it's going to look like with the nose going on which we happen to have handy and it goes on one way too because there's a flat spot on the bottom so that, and then the pitot tube goes out to about there. Where have I got that little sucker? The pitot tube slides right on and locks in. So, yeah, she's a, uh, she's a sweetheart. Her looking plain. roundabout view on her. Got the stay up stabs propped up with styrofoam cups right now so they don't rub the vertical stabs. But uh, yeah, nice looking plane. Impressed with the size. It's heavy. It's a heavy bird. But it's going to have plenty of power with the 280 millimeter in runners. I'm not doing the uh, cat on the back, guys. In fact, I might even do uh, uh, something else a little bit different and order some more camo patterns and put on the bottom as well and uh, I've got some lighting that I want to do to this not to mention I've got Guniax uh, fiery booties fiery booties coming uh, shame I didn't get him here in time for this but he just found out about it the other day so did I didn't realize this was coming so early anyway thanks for watching guys we'll have another video up shortly when I'm finishing it up and setting it up and stuff and I'll show you uh, the tips and tricks. Uh, it was advised to me by Alpha from Motion RC. He's their uh, uh, head guy there in, in design and development and production stuff out there in China. 
but uh, he's, he got a hold of me on, on my channel and recommended that I get a hold or that I check out Hobby Squawk. There's a gentleman by the name of Andrew has does has some excellent tips and, and stuff on this plane as far as the uh, rear elevator and certain things and, and alignment because I'm not sure if, if where they say it's supposed to be neutral is going to be perfect or not you know it's kind of a starting point but uh, I think they've got it kind of dialed in a little bit better so I'm going to definitely check that out myself before I actually put this bird in the air all right again thanks for watching guys we'll see you soon when I finish this thing up and uh, hopefully get those afterburners going pretty soon too Okay, thanks for watching guys. Beautiful plane. Beautiful plane. Bye for now.